Oh my gosh, this thing is awesome. Wow, I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am with the look of this wheel. And there's the Alcantara dash. Looks really, really nice. Just awesome. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice. I am so happy with this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and happy Friday the 13th. <laughs> so today, got my first cut top steering wheel done and uh, my Alcantara wrapped dash. Now, this is not the uh, wrapped version of the uh, composite wheel. I'm still building that. Uh, I have a couple updates on that coming here soon. That wheel is coming right along. This is a, a stock uh, Tesla Model 3 wheel that I cut the top off and uh, obviously pulled the upholstery off, cut off the top, and then cut off the bottom. And then I used an aluminum tube, <clears throat> welded plates to the end of the tube, and then bolted with heavy duty bolts and Loctite, bolted it up into the, uh, uh, the original hoop sections left and right, grafting it on. And then I brought it to an upholstery shop where they wrapped the bottom section here in foam and then upholstered the entire thing. So now a complete build video on this wheel will be, uh, will be forthcoming as well. But I didn't want this video to get too long. Some people like build videos, other people don't. So today's video is just about a brief overview of the making of the wheel, but mostly why I wanted to make it and you know what the car is, um, kind of my, my goal, my plans for the car, for making it look the way I, uh, I'm making it look. So now for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that I, uh, I also designed a, uh, a center screen uh, adjustable mount that drops the screen down an inch and three quarters, leans it forward about nine degrees, and then is adjustable to angle it to the side or have it symmetrical with the dash. Uh, the reason that my screen is currently in the stock location is because my prototype mount was shipped off four and a half hour drive away to the machinist and um, to put those into manufacture. I'll be driving down to visit him in just a few days when we start the production run. So currently my screen is in the stock position which irritates me to death because I want to see the whole dashboard and, and layout of the car done with that mount. For those of us that pre-ordered our cars, stood in line and, and waited years ago, Tesla had sent out a folder with uh, some design sketches of the interior of the Model 3. We were teasing that wait till you see the interior and wait till you see the steering wheel on the Model 3 and uh, Elon Musk said it's it's looks like a spaceship the steering wheel and it's really cool looking. Well then we get delivered this car with a basic round steering wheel and at least to my eye was uh, kind of plain looking. I mean, I really don't like the look of the stock wheel, and I know that style is very subjective, but I've got to tell you, one of the ugliest steering wheels on any car I've ever owned, and uh, our even our Honda Civic had a better looking wheel. So our Fords have better looking wheels. I mean, it just, I didn't like the look of it. But whatever, it was comfortable. It was relatively small uh, diameter, thick. Uh, you know, the, the wheel itself was relatively thick, felt good in your hands. And, so whatever, it was comfortable, but on this sketch that they sent us, there was a, an image from coming from the passenger door inside the car, and it showed the screen drop down and raked forward, and it showed a, a very short steering wheel with a flat bottom, I mean very shortened and flat, and it curved around and was cut at the top, like a Formula One type steering wheel. And I really, really liked that look. It also showed uh, the car with tinted windows lowered down with 20 inch wheels on it. Now, I started doing modifications to my car, not just to make it look like that, although apparently my taste is very similar to, uh, to Franz who designed the car. And I tinted my windows, lowered it an inch, put 20 inch wheels on it. And then I began to realize, whoa, whoa this looks 
a lot like what that what those sketches showed and I was looking at the sketch and I realized you know the screen was down and leaned forward and so I started considering doing that and I realized you know I think I can replicate that wheel or make something that looks very similar to it in the meantime a couple people had posted pictures online of an aftermarket company that that makes a cut top steering wheel looks sort of like a Batmobile type of wheel and it it was intriguing to me but I didn't like it for one primary reason I mean I like the cut top but they flattened the bottom but they did it by actually extending the, the corners of the wheel down slightly so now you had a wheel that was really far down in order to be flat so it was short at the top and really long at the bottom and I know some people like the look of it, but to my eye, I really don't like it. I, I figured if I'm going to be cutting the top, which shortens the top, I want to flatten the bottom and shorten the bottom so that there's an equal distance from the top to the bottom, equal distance from the steering shaft to the top and bottom to make it look symmetrical. I also wanted the wheel to be smaller. So <clears throat> now it's the stock width of 14 inches, but it's short. It's a hair under 10 inches from top to bottom. So it that was part of it was making it look like that sketch another thing is that the model 3 has this very flat dashboard which you know like it or hate it it's a very low flat dashboard it is what it is well lowering the screen I did that partly because in this configuration it I again to my taste my height my eye position and all that it's too high it completely blocks my my sight of the dash it comes up to the bottom edge of the windshield from my line of sight so I wanted to lower it enough that I could see the dash. Well, with the my screen mount lowering it as it is, and you guys, you can go back and watch the videos on that, It the whole dashboard was clear sight to me, but the top of the steering wheel cuts into the dashboard and lowering the screen made the steering wheel look even higher. I mean, I have the steering wheel, the steering column adjusted all the way as low as it'll go, and that steering wheel was still in my line of sight so I wanted to eliminate that block view and um, make the again the, the screen and the steering wheel look lower I wanted to be able to see the the dash unobstructed uh, and also the vent is right in front here and it even though the steering wheel is only partially blocks it it does kind of block some of the flow so there's just a number of reasons uh, that I wanted it open at the top so to that end i went through about six hours of labor to make this wheel now again you can tune in to watch the the full build video but i'm going to give you some just some brief info here so i used a bandsaw to cut the top and cut the bottom <clears throat> that was easy i pulled the upholstery off well one problem is the model 3 steering wheel is a three spoke design the center spoke at the bottom there isn't just it's non-structural actually the wheel is only attached metal wise to the hub on the sides the bottom spoke is just foam rubber it, it's just there dec for decorative purposes but inside of that is housed the steering wheel ECU uh, that steering wheel ECU is laid flat and takes up pretty much the entire lower spoke well so what are you going to do with that? I think other people hadn't shortened the wheel like this because what do you do with the steering wheel ECU? Ah, well, what I had to do, which was not easy, I had to make some minor changes to the wire harness inside the steering wheel. I didn't cut any wires, but I had to unwrap it, move a connector, you know, rotate it around and that. I had to take the steering wheel ECU out of its plastic case and then tape it to prevent it from shorting against anything. And instead of having it laid flat in that spoke, I had to stand it upright and mount it uh, vertically in the in the space that was there then I had to cut that foam rubber portion off and block it off I used a, a piece of a flat piece of carbon fiber panel that's bonded and pinned to the foam foam rubber at the bottom so and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you a picture of that So the only thing left to do is there is a little bit of a gap between the, uh, when I 
when I trimmed the plastic, cut the plastic trim uh, here around the thumb wheels and around the airbag, there's about a half inch or so gap between the edge of the airbag and the steering wheel. So I'm going to make cut just a little piece of plastic or carbon fiber or something as a filler just to, to hide that little open area. So that's the only part that's left to be done. Um, then I took the wheel into an upholstery shop and they wrapped this section in foam. Uh, this bottom section is black Alcantara. This is gray perforated leather and it's red stitching around the back. So, uh, and it took a long time to get it done. At the same time, I uh, wanted to get my panel done. So I brought that in a week and a half or two weeks ago to have them cover the, the, the uh, wood in black Alcantara to match the black on the steering wheel. There's also this dark gunmetal gray black or uh, gunmetal gray Alcantara on the doors. So I'm slowly making the car into what I want it to be. Now, what's my experience driving with the wheel? I had a couple commenters ask about, uh, as I've mentioned, cut top steering wheels, that they'd be worried about missing this, like you go hand over hand and you somehow miss that top part of the wheel. I'll say this, when you're doing hand over hand steering, it is less convenient, but not hard at all. It's, it's um, a different method. You don't just go hand over hand, uh, you have to basically carry one hand up and then grab the wheel where that hand was to go. And it's, I find it to be totally natural, but I also found living without a gauge binnacle in front of me totally natural and other people haven't found that to be the case for them and their perspective, their opinion on it. So for me, I have no problem with it. And in fact, I prefer this shape for a number of reasons. One is just this, laying your hand on the wheel. So when you put the car into autopilot, you're supposed to keep some pressure on the steering wheel. Well, normally I put my hand like this. Well, with a rounded steering wheel, it makes your hand on an angle and it wants to slide down and hit that lower spoke. I'd rather have my hand up higher, further over to the left and flat, which is what this provides for me. Also, there's times that I want to drive with both hands on the, the elbow rest, the arm rests, with my, my palms down on the low side of the wheel. And again, it pulls them, them down and they're on an awkward angle. This is much more comfortable than the stock round steering wheel. I wanted to, I considered just making these grip portions, cutting the bottom off and leave it off so there's just the side grips. But I have found it's nice to have the bottom bottom part of the coupe here because when you do go hand over hand if the wheel is at 180 degrees your hand can still grab this when it's at the top so this way with the top section removed I have one fourth or one fifth or whatever of the wheel missing but the other 75 or 80 percent of the diameter or of the circumference still is covered by a wheel albeit flat at this point so um, I really like it now the biggest shock to my system were a couple things I wasn't considering. One, how small it feels. I mean, this thing just feels really small and tiny in my hands. I, I mean, just almost oddly so. And uh, it, even though the width is the same, it just, it, it's uh, an optical illusion. Since the wheel's missing at the top and so short at the bottom, your brain says, oh, it's small. This is a small wheel. And it definitely feels small in my hands. And um, so that's one thing, is how small it feels. And railing through some corners here, oh, that is great. Uh, another surprising thing, which seems odd, but when I'm in autopilot, the, when the wheel, in autopilot before with a normal round wheel, as the wheel would turn around corners, uh, it, you didn't really notice it because it's a round wheel. You'd have to look at the center of the wheel to see that it's turning, but the wheel was round, so it just, it slid in and out of your view, but you didn't really see the angle change much. With this wheel, when I'm in autopilot and it goes around a corner, oh my gosh, it, it really, it jumps out at you how much it's moving. Now this road doesn't really have much in the way of a bend to it, slight left turn right there. But you can, this wheel, you can visually see it moving a lot more than the round wheel. In fact, it's almost eerie because you can really see what the autopilot is doing with this wheel on. So, so that's kind of cool. That was sort of an unusual uh, sort of surprise, something I wasn't thinking about. Also, how easy it is ingress and egress. 
in the car, which is the whole point to a, a flat bottom wheel in, in racing is to make the car easy to climb in and out of. And um, I, I, I like having my wheel as low as possible, but climbing in and out of the car, my thigh would bump it. So I had it set so that when I would get out of the car, the wheel would raise, and when I get in the car, it would lower down. Nice feature, one of the favorite features of mine of the car, but it also means that that actuator's moving up and down all the time, and over time, getting in and out of the car, say, 100 times, the wheel is now no longer going to the right position. I had to go in and reset it to where I wanted. It's like it, it wasn't it, it, it constant moving, 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 I don't know why, but it wasn't remembering the absolute correct spot. And so I had to reprogram it a couple times because every time it would move and reset, it was just you know 1% off or something. Well, now I just leave the steering column all the way down and I've got so much room. I've got an extra, I think it's three inches of room at the bottom, two and a half or something, two and a half, three inches of room at the bottom. I can get in and out of the car without any issues at all. Uh, it also, it, it the car just feels bigger with a smaller looking wheel like this, it feels a little bit more open. So aside from that, just, yeah, the look is really cool, but the driving experience is, um, this thing is great. This thing is great. I will say that the one negative to this, the one thing I miss, I'm one that likes to put my leg up against the wheel. And I, now, it, you're not supposed to do that, but I'll a lot of times put my leg against the wheel to reach over and grab something. Well, now I can't, if I do, it will turn to the right, but I can't really pull it to turn to the left hardly at all because of the, that part of the wheel is missing. Now in this car, it's not a problem because if I want to reach over for something, I can always put it in autopilot. And you know, that, so you know, turn it into autopilot, reach over, do whatever, take it back out of autopilot. Uh, but again, I, I go to put my knee against the wheel and there's nothing there. It just, it sweeps, it misses the wheel. So if you're a, a, a knee driver against the wheel, this isn't the wheel for you. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, so this is not really a wheel that I'm considering marketing. It's just something I wanted to do for me. Uh, there's so much time in this thing. I probably have six or seven hours of time devoted to doing all the mechanical work I did on top of the upholstery shop said that it, it took their upholsterer an entire day to make this cover but she didn't have a whole day so she put a couple hours into it and then a couple more hours into it and a couple more hours he said she actually has about two full days of work into it but one of those days worth of work was spent her making mistakes and correcting it because they said they've never done a wheel like this. They do a lot of steering wheels, but they've never done a wheel like this. They said it was a nightmare and it's just totally different, but they said now they do know how to do it, but it's still gonna take about twice the time of a normal steering wheel. So for me to replicate this, oh my gosh, I mean, it'll probably be a $1,500 steering wheel. So it'd be really expensive to do this wheel. So it's not like I'm gonna be making a bunch of them for resale. If one of you guys wants a steering wheel like this, or maybe wants this steering wheel, we can talk, but again, it'd be expensive. So it's not really something I'm looking to market, it's something I wanted to do for me. So anyway, a um, lot of rambling, but that's where we're at with it. I'm very excited. I love the Alcantara Dash. It's a nice compliment to the car. I never really understood wood in this car. I know some people love it, I didn't. So that's where we're at with it. Um, I've got a couple cool things coming up. I'm going to be testing a very, uh, very high-tech item in the car soon, doing a review of it. So that I'm looking forward to. And uh, my composite steering wheel, that's coming along. I'm probably three quarters of the way done with that. So keep your eyes peeled. Keep watching the channel because I've got some cool stuff coming. Anyway, thanks guys. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the wheel. And uh, my referral code will be a link in the description below. So yeah, give me your thoughts. I know this is a love it or hate it thing. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say, I hate it, I don't like it, and that's fine. But personally, I really like it. Uh, it does have, um, when you look at it up close, you can see where they struggled uh, with the with the, uh, the covering of it, uh, where they had to really stretch it around corners and that. It definitely has a handcrafted look to it, and I like that about it. So anyway, thanks guys. Have yourselves a wonderful Friday the 13th. Bye-bye <laughs> now.